What's up guys, welcome to Dex Gaming. I found that quite a lot of people were asking about trickster builds and I was getting complimented quite frequently for my build. So today I want to bring you my crit build so that you can take a look and see what you think. I will cover the skill tree in depth, preferred mods, preferred armor and preferred weapons. Hopefully you'll have everything to get started, but if you don't, I'll share tips and tricks along the way which will help you gain everything that you need. I just want to let you know that I will be streaming at least once a week moving forward, if not more. So if that interests you, or if you want to see some more Outriders content, subscribe to the channel with notifications on to get involved. If you're new to the game or you've been playing the Trickster for a while now, you will most likely be aware that survival on the Trickster is at times pretty difficult, especially if you solo the higher challenge tiers. This build will have a fair bit of survivability added into it, so this build can be used solo or in groups. To hit the highest damage possible, you will need teammates that can buff you or debuff enemies. My record single target shot on this build so far is 72.8 mil, and I'm confident that this can be beaten by going full glass cannon mode. I will mention the changes you can make when we go into detail on the mods, so if you're looking for the highest possible DPS, this will be the way to go. With that being said, let's get into the skills that I use. I've gone for Venator's Blade, which is great for slowing enemies down and also allowing you to hit double damage on your first shot, Twisted Rounds obviously, as this is a crit shot build, and then Hunt the Prey, which gets us behind the enemy. These all work in perfect synergy with the skill tree and the Yugake Otara armor set. I just want to point out that where you place your skills is also quite important. Having Twisted Rounds in the middle and Venator's Displayed and Hunt the Prey on the sides will be really helpful because you use these the most. As you only activate Twisted Rounds a couple of times, there is no point making it difficult for yourself. Right, let's hop into the skill tree and what I use. So the one I use is this one. If you want to copy it, pause the video and apply. There are some nodes you will question, however, they have purpose. So firstly, there is Anomaly Persistence, which gives 10% max health. Not really that important, but we need it for the immunity node which will buff your resistance by 15%. This is key for those solo builds and also helps your survival in a group considerably. Next we go for Arms Trick for the 15% close range damage. The reload one is pointless as we're aiming never to reload, so you will always go with the Ace of Trumps for the armor piercing. Next is Death Probability for 8% extra damage and Shotgun Master, which is essential as this is our main weapon type. Grab the additional Arms Trick for the extra 15% close range damage and then Deadly Shadow, which will give you 20% extra crit damage. This is key. Grab the next Arms Trick, making sure to select both nodes above and under, Disruptive Firepower and Outrider Executioner, for additional damage when using movement and deception skills. From here, grab the Singularity node for the cooldown reduction on deception skills and Unforeseen End, which gives 20% damage from behind an enemy. Also important, but also unavoidable as you move through the skill tree. Arms Trick will now take priority over Death Probability because 15% close range damage is better than 8% extra damage as you'll always be in close range. Next, select the death probability on the last weapon damage node, followed by another unforeseen end for another 20% behind damage boost. Bounty Hunter is next for that extra 15% damage on elites, followed by oddity summation to increase your mag by 50%. Obviously, we're going to go for the extra shotgun damage of 12%, and then finally, Cold Calculation, which gives 8% weapon damage bonus 
for each enemy in close range. This is amazing because there is no cap, unlike the mods you'd use where it's up to 5 enemies, etc. Now I know there will be a range of people here, from beginner to advanced, so I have timestamped each section. If you feel you're a beginner or advanced, please feel free to skip to the section best suited to you and your mod library. Okay, so this one is for those of you who are new to the game or just starting out on a trickster. These mods will be very easy for you to obtain and you'll quickly collect them in your library. The weapon mods consist of the following. Critical point increases your chance of scoring a critical shot by 15%, so this will make your chance 20% in total. Gravedigger's Frenzy increases critical damage by 50% for 5 seconds. Perpetuum Mobile refills your clip if you get a kill with less than 35% ammo left in the mag. Pro tip, apply this first when you load in and pay for it, then select any other mod and pay for it. You'll retain the benefit of Perpetuum Mobile. This is a bit of a cheese, but it works, so you might as well use it. Next is the armor mods. So we've got Twisted Fate, which gives 30% extra crit damage when using Twisted Rounds. Strong Twist increases weapons firepower by 15% when Twisted Rounds is active. Radiation Jump applies vulnerable when using Hunt the Prey. Personal Space, 15% extra close range damage. Bloodlust, up to 3 stacks of up to 17.5k firepower. Buckshot Shells, 10% extra shotgun damage. Mitigation from Death, up to 3 stacks of up to 45.6k armor. Damage Absorber, recommended for survival. Extra resistance of 10% and a certain amount of armor. Now let's get on to the more advanced build. The weapon mods consist of the following. In Balmer's Rage, after a kill, every shot is a critical shot for 5 seconds. The cooldown is 4 seconds, so you can go on infinitely hitting critical shots. Keep in mind, this is about crit builds, so this is always going to be the first choice. Secondly, you've got Dark Sacrifice. This gives a 75% weapon damage bonus, however you do lose 50% of your health points as a result. Killing Spree gives a 25% increase of damage up to 3 times, but deteriorates with time, but there is no negative health point reduction as a result. Fortress, this gives a 43% damage bonus based on your armor. This does cap out about 50k armor for optimal results, so it's worthwhile keeping that in mind. Perpetuum Mobile refills your clip if you get a kill with less than 35% ammo left in the mag. Pro tip, apply this first when you load in and pay for it, then select any other mod and pay for it. You will retain the benefit. This is a bit of a cheese, but it does work, so you might as well use it. Now let's discuss armor and the mods. You will want to have three pieces of the Yugake Otara set. The helmet, chest and legs are the best ones to get. Instant reload. Teleporting instantly replenishes your ammo. Stare into the barrel. Up to 10k firepower for up to 5 enemies in close range. Captain Hunter. 25% extra damage on elites. Sharp Eye, up to 16k firepower, up to 3 times for 20 seconds. Circle of Power, which is recommended for survival, boosts resistance by 15% each time you use a skill. Works very well with the Yugake Otara armor set. Deteriorates every 7 seconds. Ammo Bargain, if Perpetuum Mobile gets fixed, otherwise you won't need this. My armor recommendations are as follows. 
the Yugake Ottera set, the helmet, chest and legs, then find gloves and boots with firepower, cooldown reduction and close range damage. I recommend Cannonball Gauntlets as it has firepower and close range damage but also Captain Hunter on them. Boots need to be of epic quality as I have not yet found boots of legendary quality that offer any firepower. If you are struggling to find a specific piece of armour, check out my video on how to get the armour you need at the end of this video. My weapon recommendations are Anomaly Effigy, Enox Blessing and Death Shield. Alternatively, you can use the Bulwark or an epic shotgun with crit damage and close range damage. Weapon Leech Life would be a bonus for survival. The benefit to using an epic shotgun would be that you can change the variant so you can get a similar experience to whatever works best for you. So for me, Death Shield works really well, so I'd want to replicate that. So now let's get into how you play in this specific way. I'll include footage of playing with the team and also solo. However, this build is best optimized in groups. So firstly, you want to start with activating Twisted Rounds, followed by throwing Venator's Knife, teleport behind the enemies and then let rip and you will kill them quickly. In some cases, you will be fighting bosses, which are pretty tanky in health points. Since the Yugake Otara set doesn't consume the hunt, the prey skill, if you target an enemy marked with Venator's Blade, you'll be able to use it again shortly after. If you're getting close to the end of your ammo and Venator's Knife isn't up, teleport again for the refill and keep smashing away at the boss. In a group, this works in a similar way. However, be warned that if you're running with someone running freeze, it can be quite hard to target frozen enemies with your skills. Pyromancers that debuff are great for stacking that damage up, and if you have two of them, you'll see some very good results. If you're running something like Killing Spree or Embalmer's Rage, you will need to kill a couple of enemies before your Pyromancer or Pyromancer's debuff the target. If you're running Circle of Power, which I highly recommend, then you will need to be using your skills as often as possible for optimal results. When fully stacked, you will have 60% resistance and this does make a big difference when you're either soloing or playing in a group for survival. If you have any questions about the build, please let me know in the comments. If this video has helped you and you want to keep up to date on all my latest content, hit that subscribe button and I'll be focusing on making a lot more content in the future. I've linked some videos I feel will be really helpful for you in the end screen. And until next time, have a great day.